So we kind of had this thing at the end of Unit 3. Uh, we had a Tennessee history guided notes kind of thing where you, you had some slides presented. And uh, along with that, you had a paper with some vocabulary words and some questions. And um, we did not get through all of that in class. We got through about uh, half of that, a little less. And I think a lot of folks did not finish it up, judging by what we saw on the test. So today in class, we will begin by going over some slides from this old slideshow, which, uh, you know, putting on here for you guys that might be absent or you might want to review this later on. Tennessee from territory to a state. So let's get started. And again, this is, you know, it kind of falls right in the middle of Unit 3 and Unit 4. Some years it's presented in Unit 3, some years for Unit 4. But the story really begins in Unit 3 when we try to form the state of Franklin. And this is during the days of the Articles of Confederation. You see, the Articles of Confederation kind of had this thing where the government couldn't raise taxes, but instead they could sell their western lands. So North Carolina has the claim of everything from their, their western border all the way to the Mississippi River, which is today the state of Tennessee. So they have this, um, a little bit of war debt, and they're told you can retire your war debt if you give this to the Articles of Confederation Congress. So they voted to do so. And then they had their own election before the information could make it to New York, which was the capital at the time, to be accepted by the Articles of Federation Congress. The new legislature is sworn in and they say, what are you thinking? We can't give this away. And they take it back. In the meantime, the news had reached over the mountain to the Watauga settlers and the Watauga settlers said, we are ready to be rid of North Carolina. They a lot of the people are over there, and the main reason they're over there is to get away from the jurisdiction of the state of North Carolina. They did not like, going back into the colonial period, they did not like the royal governors, and they wanted to be free of North Carolina altogether. So March 1785, the state of Franklin organized a legislature in Jonesboro, and John Sevier is the governor. The newly elected North Carolina governor, Governor Martin, says you need to obey our laws or you're in rebellion. So the people of North Car the people of Franklin don't know which side to follow. Do we follow North Carolina? Do we follow Franklin? And this goes on. There's actually a little bit of a scuffle, a little fighting going on uh, in the in between there in the city of Greenville until eventually uh, we get to 1788. It's time for a new governor. Uh, John Sevier could be reelected, but John Sevier says, I'm done with this. So this leads us to a little bit of information about John Sevier. John Sevier, after Tennessee, this is not Franklin, after Tennessee becomes a state, is our first ever elected governor. He ser ter serves a total of six terms. The terms at that time are two years, not four. And he has, uh, there's a rule in the Constitution that you can't serve but three. So he serves three terms, takes one off, comes back and serves three more terms. Um, immensely popular in his state because of fighting he did during the Revolutionary War, also known as an Indian fighter. Uh, he is honored in the Capitol, the United States Capitol, with a statue. There are two Tennesseans. One is Andrew Jackson. One is John Sevier. And, of course, if you've ever been to Sevier County, which is Sevierville and Pigeon Forge, you know where John Sevier comes from. So that's kind of your connection, perhaps. Um, he, uh, well, let's move on out of that. Now, here's another thing. The Spanish Conspiracy. Um, if you recall, following the end of the French and Indian War, we um, Britain gains control of all the French territory, and that French territory goes all the way to Louisiana. What they really wanted was Florida and just to the Mississippi River because they didn't know what was out there, and so they didn't really want what is now considered uh, Louisiana territory, or at this time is considered Louisiana territory. So they made a deal with Spain, give us Florida, and you can have all that mess over there. Louisiana Territory is now yours. 
So Spain is in control of that. In 1784, as we have a lot of settlers in Tennessee, we've now moved a lot of folks over to the Cumberland area. Uh, and, and there's a big settlement in the Cumberland area, which is now, of course, Nashville, the big city of Nashville. And there's a lot of folks over there who are living, farming, and doing those kinds of things. And what you would do is you would harvest your crop, sell your crop of tobacco. You'd cut down a bunch of trees. You would tie those trees together to make a raft, put your crop on there, and float all the way from Nashville, Cumberland River, up to the Ohio River, Tennessee River, to the Ohio River, down the Mississippi River to New Orleans. So if you can imagine, this is a long journey down the river. Once you got down there, you sell your crops and you take apart your boat. Well, the problem is in 1784, Spain stops that from happening. They control the Mississippi River and they say, no, you guys aren't doing that anymore. And they just stop us and cut us off from the world markets. Then they started urging the Native Americans to attack the settlers. The Westerners being what is today Tennessee, the Westerners living in Tennessee suggested, made overtures that we would gladly join Spain if they would stop the attacks. Now, we did not ever want to become part of Spain because Spain is Catholic. And uh, being that we're of this American idea of religious freedom, we didn't want to have to convert to Catholicism, but we led them to believe that so that they would listen to the overture. What we're really trying to do is to force the United States government to accept us as a state. So we've become a territory, the Southwest Territory. Now, Southwest Territory is actually everything south of the Ohio River down to the Gulf of Mexico. So if you consider today, that's the modern states of Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama. Georgia is not because Georgia is already a state, but all those areas are the Southwest Territory. Well, North Carolina, like I say, you got to go back to North Carolina. They've got to let us free. They let us free. And um, then because there are a number of folks already living over here, we have a governor appointed to us by the uh, Articles of Federation Congress. Uh, actually, by this point, I think we might actually be to the Constitution. But uh, we have a congressionally appointed new uh, governor. He's William Blunt. He was a paymaster of troops during the Revolutionary War. He is also a framer. He is a signer of the Constitution representing the state of North Carolina. One of his duties is to manage the Indian Affairs south of the Ohio River. And uh, Blunt is commander-in-chief of the militia. He passes that role on to John Sevier. Um, this is where he ruled from. This is Rocky Mount. Now, Rocky Mount is a nice for the time, nice for the area cabin located up in the area of Johnson City, Tennessee. It's been rebuilt and that's a rebuilding of the structure. It's got a new roof on it, but that's the original timbers. And that is the first capital of the Southwest Territory. You can go up if you're ever in the Johnson City area and visit Rocky Mount today. Um, it's up there again where the Watauga and Holston Rivers come together. He wanted to move on further south. There's a place on further south called White's Fort. 1791, he moves to White's Fort where he builds this mansion. This is the Blunt Mansion. Now, if you have ever been to Knoxville for a football or basketball game, Robert Thompson Bowling Arena and Neyland Stadium are, you can walk literally a half a mile and see this structure. I've actually done it by accident. I was leaving a parking garage, and I said, what in the world is this old house doing here? And walked up and I read the tag. So this is uh, the Blunt Mansion. He renames White's Fort to Knoxville, and the rest is history. Skip through this. Stages of statehood. Now, we've already gone over this. This is just a review. 5,000 adult free males. The territory is governed by a federally appointed governor, secretary, and judges who make and enforce the laws. When the population reaches 5,000, a House of Representatives is elected. The total population is 60,000. That's men, women, children, slaves. A territory can apply for statehood. Finally, when a census is done, an official count of the population, we had 77,000. We're 17,000 over the number. 
Among this are 10,000 slaves and 763 free African-American folks. And uh, if they had the qualifications of land, they could vote. They're a 21-year-old male, and you're free, and you own 200 acres. You could have been a voter at that time. Of course, they're going to change that and make that illegal. But 1796, June 1st, 1796, Tennessee becomes the 16th state of the Union. Cumberland Gap, very important to the history of Tennessee. 1,200-foot deep escarpment. We've talked about this, and there, this actual photograph of it. Daniel Boone found the gap, starts leading people in the Tennessee area. And as I mentioned, if you uh, sell your goods all the way down the Mississippi River here on the right side, then the next thing you would do is you would walk home. You can't go up the Mississippi River on a raft. You would have to have a motor, and nobody had invented a motor. So cotton and tobacco are popular crops in Middle Tennessee. The harvest can be floated on flatboats down to Cumberland, Ohio, Mississippi, to New Orleans, turned into firewood and sold. Tennessee farmers would then return to Nashville along the Notches Trace. Bandits are there, so you've got to be very careful. You've got to hide your money. you got to get off the road if you're going to build a fire at night, if you're going to sleep over. Uh, a lot of folks were robbed. This is a, a section of the Notches Trace. There's still around. Some of it's preserved. Some of it for hiking, some of it is a road. But um, ultimately, uh, also famous Tennessean Andrew Jackson spent a lot of time walking up and down that thing. And that's it.